Hello everyone and welcome back to Local Chat. It's episode 35. I'm your host, William Crosby. And joining me this week is not Ian, which is why I'm just so jubilant. You know, it's just incredible. Uh, who is here? You might be asking. I hear you through the void. It is Jake Terrio. Hi, did you say jubilant? I think it's jubilant. Ju- no, like I meant like jubilee. Like yeah, when, jubilant. Yes, yeah, yeah. I said it right. I'm pretty sure I checked it in post and I said it right. Um, also jubilant is Chris Elliott. Uh, hi. Apparently, I'm still in the other uh, OBS Ninja call, so I'm gonna fix that real fast. What, you're in two OBS Ninja calls. I'm in the save data one. <laughs> Why are you in the save data one? Because I'm an idiot. Hello. <laughs> I'm here because Ian Gibson's not. Oh, uh, that's very true. Uh, and also, Kyle couldn't make it. Um, see, I should rate you guys. I'll let you know how I rate you guys. No. Um, uh oh. Uh oh. Um, we are here to Hold talk on, about. Hold on, where's the fucking rating? <laughs> The rate? No, I'm not actually going to rate you guys. That Come would be on. a horrible, horrible That'd thing. Be a terrible thing to do. Mm. And then I don't want to hurt Ian's feelings when he's just listening to this. If he was here, mm-hmm. then... he comes in second to last. Yeah, but you know, he's a charity case. Um, <laughs> that sounds so bad. Oh, good. Uh, folks, we're here to talk about all sorts of gaming news, which is why I have recruited these two to be here. Um. I had a I had an opening bit and I thought of it this morning. Uh, I decided to start adding bits because I thought it'd be fun. Like last week, I was talking going to talk about the Green Knight, but I think we ended up talking about something else. So that kind of like bridged the gap. And so I had a good one this morning, and I really don't remember what it was, which then made me think this is a good bit. Just trying to remember what the bit was, but I really don't know what it was. One, one step closer to Ellen with every show. <clears throat> um, yes, I scream at everyone behind the scenes. Uh, right before we go live. <laughs> How could He's also you a Republican. This? Yeah, and I'm also uh, good friends with George Bush. Both of them. <laughs> um, uh, so we can just hop right into it as we usually Let's do. Let's just jump into it. Jake, why did I lose we, your camera? Lost oh, Jake. you're He's back. back. I'm here. You two were frozen <clears throat> for a second. It's just la- latency. I feel like no lag. matter where you are, you have the worst internet connection ever. The Midwest, you, you turned, baby. You, you turned your VPN off this time. I'm on a different computer. Oh, this okay. one's just <laughs> Roman free. That was the no wor- VPN. That was the worst episode of Local Chat because it was like you took about 15 seconds to respond to anything I said. Yeah, <laughs> and it was so yeah. bad. No, that that was my interim computer <laughs> that forced me to go through a VPN. Yeah, that was pretty great. Um, so. I- Let's start with what we've been playing. Um, Jake, why don't you go first? Because you're I the one will. I saw first. <clears throat> go for it. Uh, Destiny 2, obviously. It's the new season where we just... Uh, Tuesday would have been the start of week two of the new season. So uh, no no longer are we having to deal with space racists. Now we're having to deal with uh, space <laughs> Uh, homicidal genocidal uh regents from dimensions that we're wandering through um marasov is back well if that's i saw what you were wondering what i was circuitously is that the, is that the alien lady to. with the boobies mm, I... <laughs> she's an alien kind of she um, does i wouldn't probably necessarily have quantify her by just that feature well she's is she the white. one is she the one that everyone's horny for Mm, you will have to be far more specific. The Destiny community, I don't, I don't community this is game quite horny. Really close enough for um, lots of people. I, they're, they're horny now for they're, Savathun, they're was... who does not have boobies. She is a chitinous mound of like moth wings and, uh, that's, that's doing it for and me. skeletal going. bits. Oh, did they go uh, back to the original Destiny moth people design that got canned? No, uh, but they're using it's um they the she has big moth wings. But I we'll wish they would introduce those moth people from that concept art. Such that's a cool piece of concept awesome. art. Awesome. Um, but yeah, no, really that's, cool. it seems like that's that's as close as we'll get. Is this this the Oryx's sister has giant moth wings? I will say I but jumped into uh, when they announced the new season. I jumped into it and I played I played I played I played I played a mission. 
uh, that I did not understand anything that was going on. Uh, and there was a guy talking to me who was Saint-14, which I just know mm-hmm. that he had a shotgun that I got at one point. And then, um, then the guy from Forsaken that I shot in the head was there for some reason. And Aldrin. Marazov was there. And then mm-hmm. um, there's someone else. It was like I came back to a TV show eight seasons later. Or... Well, see, that's kind of that is what I am loving about Destiny right now. But also the problem with it is they are essentially producing an episodic video game where every week there's new story content, and then every season, literal, you know, seasons, it's just a totally new, you know, big story arc. So you kind of are just like jumping in yeah. at season fifteen of a tv show that has been on the air for seven years and there's and the other thing is there's still things wrong with that game that they have not fixed and like mechanical things that and every ever since when they introduced that exotic booth that you can go to there's like Mm -hmm. a tag on it that tells me to go there Mm -hmm. anywhere i am on the tower and it's mm-hmm. I haven't played in a year and a half and it's still there and it won't it's letting go you know away. there's new exotics that you can I buy. go to every single page and it says I can't do anything on any of the pages and I try to buy any gun. I've went through each gun to make sure I couldn't buy it or anything and it's still there. It says new quest available and I have it just no wants idea you to know what it is and I'm angry about it. There. But also, but it's telling me everywhere. It's in the I corner know. always. It does it for me too. Mara Sav <sighs> is the one that I was talking about when I said everybody horny for this lady. Okay, she is, I'd say, probably the most conventionally attractive of uh, Destiny's lady NPCs. Um, but people are far hornier for the unconventional characters, like, I, like hey, the Traveler and, and the and, Witch and, Queen. And, and I'm 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 cool with that, especially <laughs> because this lady just looks. Like every E girl. Um, how do you spell Sabathun? Uh, S A V A T H U with that triangly character over it, then an N. Circumflex. Uh, people, internet got me. Oh, this you just is this the witch, the witch fucking queen. rules. Yeah, she's awesome. Okay. However, this is scarily turning into a Destiny podcast. Let's and... just talk about <laughs> Destiny. Ian is I, I, don't, screaming. I don't like Destiny. <laughs> I tried. I like Destiny 1, an okay amount. I tried Destiny 2 both on launch and then when they did Beyond Light. That's what it's called, right? Or Forsaken yeah. might have been uh, too. And it was Beyond Light. Um, okay. And both times I got to the end of the content that was present to me and went, okay. And then I didn't play it anymore. <laughs> I, I played well, we can just... Destiny 2. Sorry to interrupt. I played Destiny 2 You're base good. through Forsaken all the forsaken content and then got to like the dream dreaming city was in, when that was introduced right yep so got yes. through all like that stuff and then I, I i think the raid had just come out when i uh stopped playing and then i've bought every single thing since then um and played for about 15 minutes and went eh and then haven't so they're getting my money i'm a supporter <laughs> You're locked in. I'm locked in. Lakshmi'd in. Oh, she's dead now. I've heard. <laughs> Thank God the I big, hated her. They, they, she got... It was one of those where I love uh, uh, Sora Agdashlu, the voice actress. And so I was like, yes, Lakshmi's back right at the beginning of that season. And then like two or three weeks in, I'm like, she's a horrible space racist. <laughs> and then it Sorry. was just... So, she got, the, the voice hmm? actor's name is Sorad... What was the voice actor's I name? I believe she is an Iranian actress, and so I might be pronouncing it wrong, but I believe it is Sore Agdashlu. Um, she's that, on The Expanse. It's a great name. That fucking rules. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And she's I, very good. So, Jake, just to give you a little taste mm. of me, because uh, I know mm. you've always wanted it, I played mm. that mission where you're... So I literally booted up Destiny. And I mm-hmm. played the mission where you uh, are on the ice Europa and you're mm-hmm. s- you're hunting down 
uh, Marrakesh or something, whatever his name is, and he's got all the baby fallen with him. And then mm -hmm. it cuts to the city after the whole thing, and Lakshmi's there and everything, and they're like, oh, hey, you mm -hmm. can live in this part of town and all that sort of stuff. And then they brought me back to the helm, which is a thing I had no idea about, and I said, what is this mm -hmm. stupid thing? Um, and I'm on it, and then I said... F this. So I logged off. And then the next day they're like, hey, season fart starting 15. Uh, I'm just trying to annoy Jake. Um, but anyways, they said season 15 started. So then I hopped in and immediately the next mission was that season 15 beginning mission. So those two hmm. missions back to back helped with the confusion. Yeah. I will tell you, you missed a lot. <laughs> and it's Mithrax, Kel of the House of Light. I don't know if you remember that <laughs> no. mission in Destiny 2 Vanilla where you go to Titan and you're following this fallen captain uh, <gasps> and you through saved Titan. Him? That's Mithrax. But, and he's also the one who was on the farm dead inside to get the... the Not dead. He was alive outbreak in the basement perfected. of the farm to get Outbreak perfected. I do remember Correct. that. Um... Wow, I Should just... I talk about the other games I've been playing? <laughs> no, oh, we're twelve Oddly, minutes in. No. I um, I, I the last thing I'm going to say is I really enjoyed that um strike from the first Destiny where you had to fight the fallen guy in that like arena room, and there was like an upper platform and lower platform, and he had a rocket launcher. Uh, that was a good strike. They might have brought it back for. It's like you're going through it and you fight the sp the room before you fight one of the spider spider walkie things. Oh, uh, the shadow thief. Yeah, yeah, that one's pretty good. Anyways, you can talk about Railroad Tycoon Three if you would like. Yeah, so I've just been slowly playing through Railroad Tycoon Three in preparation for an upcoming <laughs> subpixel video, and it's still as charming as ever. <laughs> just little trains just doing their thing. I'm like, oh, that one's getting oil from from texas and taking it over here and that one's getting coffee from mexico and taking it over there um yeah i love it and then i've been playing eve online because my brother was like hey i restarted eve online we should play eve online and that's just a mess it is a game that has fascinated me for as long as i've known about it i have i have never and i i think for the better of everyone will never touch that <laughs> fucking game i had a pretty good time on that stream we did uh, yeah, Jake. I've been I've been playing it on and off since like like 2010. Um, the fact that there is like millions of actual human dollars at stake, and people like s go into espionage into other companies and like make fake it's accounts to like bonkers. It's, it's fucking insane. <laughs> this is yeah. espionage right now. Jake's actually doing it. He's trying to scout. I was, <laughs> I was very briefly gang I was I very briefly was involved in some corporate espionage in Eve but I I was this is when I was like 14 or 15 and I immediately whiffed it by sending <laughs> a, a a player message to the wrong person therein revealing that I was trying to infiltrate um Excuse it was bad me. I would like to infiltrate this base please that is so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like I was supposed to write a message to the former owner with like I was it was that a bunch of people had stolen a bunch of our corporation's assets and taken them absconded with them to, you know, who knows where. Europe. And so we were like, ah, the corpse going to dissolve, quote unquote, because we have no more anything whatever. And so the former um head of the corporation was like hey can you try to join these guys who have infiltrated but first send me a message saying you know like screw you guys i don't want to be any part of this blah 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 to like give yourself some credibility in case anyone asks and i sent that to the wrong person <laughs> um and then uh... i think i just quit quit both corpse outright and it was too embarrassed <laughs> like no, i can't do this all I'm visualizing right is you hitting enter on the message realizing it and the next shot is just you unplugging the computer and just it was very it close to that it, it's uh, it, cuts, it was i uh, give ron swanson dumping the computer in the dumpster <laughs> yeah it was instantaneous after hitting send i was like oh oh no and then oh, i was just like so da, 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 da. i'm out of here <laughs> oh that's my new favorite thing um, mm -hmm. 
I will say I played uh, you were kind enough to gift me R Railroad Tycoon 3 um, even though it's $700 so thank you I know um, I had a lot of uh, <clears throat> points saved up <laughs> I think I played like 45 minutes of it and I genuinely enjoyed it it was it it's was fun. it was way other than getting it to run on my PC it was way more intuitive and like modern controlled than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, that's, that's what always surprised surprising. me when I hopped back into it. I was yeah. like, I understand all of that. And oh, this trains. is a game that came out in like 2003 or something. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. And versus, it's funny too, because I, I bought, um, as I classically do, I buy games for a later date. And I bought um, Transport Fever 2, I think. And I was doing the train section of that a while ago, and it felt, and that's a, that came out last year, I think, and that's like on par, other than graphics, with Aero Tycoon 3, so that's exciting. Uh, well, for all eaved out, Chris, would you like to jump into what you have been playing? Um, yeah, let's talk about videoed games. The first one is the most videoed of them all, RuneScape. Uh, a classic. I'm I'm sure I was talking about last time I was on this hellhole program. Um, <laughs> Thank but I you. keep agreeing to be on. Uh, <laughs> hey, man. Uh, RuneScape's great. It's the best MMO. Fucking fight me. Um, this game is so fucking good. I, 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 I'm, I'm almost out of things to say because there, it reaches a point where it's like, I can say this game is great because it fucking is. This, it offers so much. There's an incredible amount of content. And as I do more and more content, especially the newer stuff that I wasn't around when I played RuneScape when I was a youth, um, it realizes like this is just such a fucking well-designed game from top to bottom. And the the people who are making old school RuneScape at Jagex, not the people who are making RuneScape three, I can't vouch for them, but the people who are making old school actually give a shit. And like, pure and simple, when people care about a game they're developing, you can tell that much more. I think it's a lot more transparent in games that are updated frequently. Because you can see like the small like things that they do that like are reflect reflexive of player base. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, this game is it's I it's just so fucking good. I I cannot recommend enough for anyone that <laughs> enjoyed RuneScape at one point to try old school RuneScape now. It's it's a fu it's flawless. <laughs> it's not flawless. No no game is flawless, but it is it's a, it's incredible. It's such a fucking experience. Also, there's there's nothing more powerful than like being like I'm going back to this thing I was too dumb to fully understand as a kid as an adult with multitasking as like in like my brain is bigger now. Powerful. So much bigger. Powerful. Um I genuinely enjoy RuneScape as well. I my friend and I used to get up at 6 a.m. on Saturdays before my parents got up and just played for like 4 hours. Hell yeah. Um it was great. Enjoy RuneScape. I played it a bunch of RuneScape, obviously in like high school and middle school. But then when I was in college, I had kind of fallen off and I hadn't played it for a couple of years. And my roommate was like, "Hey, I just downloaded RuneScape. Did you ever play that?" I'm like, "Heck yes, I did." <laughs> and I was able to get into my old account and we played RuneScape. He it is very much he'll play something for like a week, a bunch, uh... and then just move on to something else um this is the same thing with minecraft we played minecraft together for like a week and then he dropped off and i kept playing it and then we played runescape for like a week that's like the but, opposite um, of ian who will play a game for an hour and decide it's awful but uh i think the last the last thing i really remember in terms of new content was probably when they introduced um uh dun dungeoneering which i really really enjoyed um a uh, really cool mechanic but, um, didn't necessarily need to be a skill because it was basically a mini yeah. game but like the idea of i mean that's way before procedural generation but procedurally generated dungeons that you do with your friends that's like they did that in fucking like 2012 yeah that's awesome i loved it i, I just i think i went back and played it at least once since college but i don't remember when or to what extent i just remember being terrified of losing my stuff in the wilds mm. and or the wilderness that's what it is um yeah. And just being like afraid but it's it's funny going back now how much muscle memory i have of that immediate like th four towns um uh, but also how how many names of things i don't remember because we just like called it like oh like the port and then i mean obviously there's like lumbridge faldor and 
Barak, but like that nice. little port area has port a name. Sam. Yeah, and I saw it when I was playing like a month ago and I was like, that has a name? Like absolutely had no idea. Um, and I was like running through quests and stuff being like, I was so stupid, like too dumb to understand any of this. Like, it's so obvious, not obvious, but you're like, oh, this is how I figured this out now versus back then. You're like, oh, I got to when you put when, a when you had no concept of efficiency versus being an adult who has value in their time. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like hit sit at the bank and put or uh, at that bank and wherever and put the willow trees and fish right, there and, and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Um. It, other than that, Willie and I played Ride to Hell Retribution uh, this past Saturday. That, that man, that true. game sure sure does have have fully clothed sex scenes, doesn't it? You know, it really did. Uh, that Jake, are you familiar with that game at all? I am familiar with Ride to Hell Retribution in that it often comes up on people's lists of like worst games. Yeah, uh, but I have not played terrible. it nor seen anything from it. I don't believe. To watch the stream archive because. Uh... Hey, good, good uh, headshot, headshots in that game. Yeah, it, it's them. weird because it's a game that has a lot of things that are done very competently, but then like basic things such as voice acting and the story and like <laughs> just like logic aren't present. So, for example, we need to get over an electrified fence and the character's solution to this was to steal an oil tanker and then drive it to the power plant and then blow up the power plant so the fence wouldn't be electrocuted. <laughs> Instead I'm of picturing just... like an Exxon Valdez sized oil tanker. Is this? <laughs> no, oil no, truck no, no, tanker. Uh, oil truck. Like, like, oh, like, like I, got you. I got you. I'm like, this is, seems way more convoluted than it needs to be. Uh, yeah, he's on the Exxon Valdez going vroom, vroom. <laughs> like, I guess that would be a that there's a lot of incendiary material but, on such a vessel. Literally, he like steals the truck. I was like, oh, smart. He's just going to drive it through the electrified fence. Nope. To the power plant to blow up the power plant. Perfect. <sighs> Amazing. That game's incredible. Uh, next up is Boyfriend Dungeon, the uh, flavor of the month uh, dungeon crawler. Procedural generated stuff uh, with uh, uh, people to date. Um, we're decently into this game. Uh, like, like progression wise, I'd say we are almost done with it. Um, but like we stopped playing it last week and just fell off hard. I think the biggest problem with this game is that I don't like any of the rom romanceable characters. Ooh, mm. yeah. I find a lot of them really annoying and grating, uh, and a lot of them are the ones that are just like not not that interesting. So, if this is a a dating sim and I don't like anyone I'm allowed to date, why would I continue to play it? Have I either y'all played this? No, no I've seen it. a lot. I've been following the development, but that does seem like I've never really thought about that as a as a dating sim. Like you kind of have to, there's obviously going to be some people that just don't click with anybody yeah. much as I imagine real dating. Yeah, would be. Uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of potential to add more dateable characters and make cool stuff like that. I think I do think it is a tremendous myth that they did not make a dual handed weapon that is a polyamorous uh pairing mm. what i just it, I, feel, I feel like it's right there but i also i mean i don't know i i kind of i do trust kit fox to write that well i wouldn't trust most companies like i wouldn't trust a lot of other companies to write that well but kit fox i think has the, the chops because the dialogue's pretty good overall but other than that yeah game kind of fell off of it and uh the last one is uh, a perpetual nightmare of mine rpg maker xp uh i just wanted to talk about this somewhere uh this program is the most fucking infuriatingly laid out program <laughs> I, like i look i work with after effects and uh, illustrator daily on a day-to-day -day basis i open both those programs and i fuck around with stuff i would rather sit with <laughs> after effects infinite menus for the rest of my goddamn life than fucking have to understand why rpg maker xpa like 10 year old program is coded the way it is the fuck <laughs> that's it that's all i want the pokemon's going, going well right <laughs> yeah I, I got a bunch of new tile sets they're very pretty oh uh. That's fantastic. I remember messing I've never around heard... with... You go, Jake. I've never heard After Effects described as having infinite menus, but that's kind of the perfect descriptor for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, I was going to say, I, I messed around a lot with RPG Maker when I was like 13, 14, 15. Um, and yes, it is as inscrutable well, as I've you described. Well, I've lost camera. You lost my camera? Well, I have my you camera. Don't see you. 
Um, well, it's just me. I I love you. Just want mm, you to know I that. I love you too. <laughs> Maybe. Remember at Extra Life where um, nothing worked on OBS Ninja when Ian went in his convertible ride? That was the worst. So you just made me think about that. Good remember thing there's no that, evidence of that. Remember on Extra Life when I uh, slammed the door to the office opened and yelled, In Joe Biden's America! <laughs> and you were in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> yeah, but you did bring me coffee, so I forgave you. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I'm not back, am I, Jake? No, but if the stream can see you, I don't okay. need to, I guess. Yeah, good. I'm just flipping you off the whole time. Um, mm. I will quickly go through what I've been playing. I downloaded Sniper Elite 4 off of Game Pass, and I played through seven of the eight missions, and they were very fun. I enjoyed playing that game. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? I'm really enjoying this. I'm going to buy the Season Pass. Um... 30 bucks which is a little bit steep for a game that's been out since 2018 i think but i was like you know what? it comes with all the dlc everything's out now it comes with that mission where you get to kill hitler and another campaign sort of thing so i was like you know what i'll have this these guns the game for a with while the x-ray cam where you can shoot dudes in the balls yeah yes which it is you would think that doesn't get old it it a little bit <laughs> gets old but it's still pretty, especially when you're playing that game, like, not well, but you're not playing it on a stream. So you're not, like, always going for the balls. Like, I always just go for the head, so it's really not funny very often. It's just a man's head exploding. Um, so anyways, I bought the DLC, and then come to find out the eighth mission was the last mission. And I was like, oh, why did I spend $30? But then I went and killed Hitler. And it was all worth it. Um, that was a pretty good level. And then there's three more like campaign levels after that. Um, that, that like DLC campaign stuff. So I, I got to play through those still. Even if I don't touch it, I, I still like I'll give Rebellion money. Like I like their games they put out. Um, speaking of what do they games, do besides Sniper Elite? Uh, they do Zombie Army, which is very similar. But it's a four Sniper Elite. So the Zombie Army, uh, I was playing four, but Zombie Army is it's four player co-op third person sniper elite almost but there's no it's 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 more toned down like there's still like the sniper cam and everything but it's not as like obviously serious um it, they're really fun uh i've been trying to get ian to play on stream uh i don't think he dislikes the game i think just He's never played it or anything like that. But anyways, I've been playing Zombie Army 4. It's got a neat system where you can rank the difficulty, kind of like Diablo games or whatever, but you can select default one player, two player, three player, four player. So like you can specify, hey, I'm playing the single player. Don't like rush me with a bunch of stuff. Plus I have a perk that's like, I can get myself up from being downed by shooting a mm -hmm. zombie. So I don't need someone there. So I've been casually playing that. That's really fun. It, it may remember there's, I mean, this is the fourth game, so the other... I played one and two years and years ago. I've never touched three, um, mostly because they released three in conjunction with one and two as a trilogy, and then they charged full price, like, more for it, and I was like, I don't want to pay more money for only one game out of... I mean, they kind of remastered them, too, but I was just like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, definitely recommend checking out both these games because they're on Game Pass. Also on Game Pass, Train Sim World 2, just driving a train, it's it's fun, you do uh, basic things, it's pretty much Truck Simulator, but with trains, it's very therapeutic, and I just, like, I... Hold on, I, I gotta ask, but like, in Truck Simulator, you gotta go around traffic and shit, right? Yeah. But trains are on tracks. Yeah, but you get to switch you the tracks, adjust you get your speed to around turns. you get to uncouple the the stuff onto the different yards it, uh, train simulators i mean there, uh, there's a free mode like a free play mode but it's way more structured than euro truck so like i'll mm -hmm. do a mission it'll tell you up front how long it's going to take so i'll do like an hour long mi mission which is like switching uh you're like moving switching mission yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're moving cars and cargo from one track to another and like laying them out and then like the next mission you take a train to the other side and you pick up two of those cargos and you got to bring it somewhere. Like, so the missions kind of build on themselves, 
which is really interesting. So by the time you're, I'm on like the 10th or 12th mission and I like remember all the things I did and they're still there. So it's like, I'm just building off of this world rather than it resetting every single mission. Uh, and I think that's kind of cool. Um, and then finally, I started playing Final Fantasy VI, uh, also known as Final Fantasy III in North America. Um, I brought my SNES Mini home, and it happened to be on there, which is crazy. Um, actually, I think it's pretty sure it's the one that was included in the original games. Um, it's cool. It's fun. I played the first 30 minutes before dinner because I am a poor planner. Um, and I haven't jumped back into it yet, but I really liked what was happening. Um, Chris, as, or as Chris knows, we played through Chrono Trigger, haven't finished it yet, but we played okay. through a lot of it, and uh, I kind of just wanted more of that itch. I thought I am going to do Like a Dragon. I was going to do it. It's I know so it's really good. good. I like Yakuza 0. I'm going to do it at some point. Same with Dragon Quest you, you 11. You will get to the final cutscene, Will. And then the next time I see you, you'll be like, oh, my fucking God, the final <sighs> cutscene in that game. Yeah, and I'll be yeah. like, yeah, I know. Uh, but I wanted to I wanted to get a little bit more like history under my belt before I'm allowed to enjoy anything. So There's a Stargate in that game. Um, oh, what? It's like a dub submission. There's like a joke about Stargate. <laughs> there was a Stargate in Quake. It was pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, anyways, that's all I've been playing. Uh, I barely touched Final Fantasy VI, but I wanted to mention it because it is the year of the JRPG. In case people were wondering, <laughs> three uh, more months, maybe then it's over. <laughs> yeah, three more months, and then it'll be the decade of the JRPG. <laughs> um. So moving on, that means it's time for the news, folks which in our country means we got to play the uh, national news theme uh, written by a person who actually we're not even allowed to say his crimes live on air because we will uh, get arrested. So here we go. None, here none is chasing Kojima. Here is the news theme. Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? Man, if I asked anyone on the street if they thought that was recorded through a Discord call, they would not believe it. But it was, which is <laughs> I feel like crystal clear. I, I feel like most of them would be like, what the fuck is Discord? And you'd be like, exactly, yeah, that's, that's moving true. on. It's just the second time Zach tried playing that to re-record it, it like was awful like, it was in and out you could barely like like the guitar kept taking over from his voice so i have no idea how that first take ever like came through clearly you found it the perfect resonant tone the perfect resonant evil um it's time for the news folks which means we get to talk about all sorts of fun things um felt like there wasn't too much news this week uh like gamescom was last week which was pretty big TGS um, is next week. TGS, TGS two weeks from now. I think it's next week. Um, Jake's antsy to play that guitar. Uh, the tapping solo from <laughs> Eruption. <laughs> oh, I love Eruption. That hit song by Smashing Pumpkins. Van Halen. Van. I don't think you I can name a. I don't think I can name a single Van Halen song. You can name at least one Van Halen song. Eruption. Come on. <laughs> uh, fun fact about Eddie Van Halen. Monster of a human being. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Enter Sandman. No, that's, that's Metallica. Metallica. Uh, so close. Dance the Night Away. That cover of that Roy Orbison <laughs> song. Uh, sh uh, Piano uh, Man. Running with the Devil. <laughs> Piano Man. <laughs> running with the Devil's a Van Halen song? You're beautiful. I believe so. Oh, shit. Um, when, Unchained. When a, Panama. Win a contest, a party with Van Halen, and then die. Mm -hmm. That's a real thing that happened. <laughs> Rock and roll. Oh, okay, that's all that is. Our system video out. game news. We're also um, not going to talk about Roland Emmerich's Moonfall. Oh, my gosh. That was a great okay. trailer. I haven't watched the trailer. I typically don't watch trailers, but no one, everyone won't shut the fuck up about this thing. So I'm gonna have to go watch. I, the I just think it's a great concept. Also, if anyone's read the book Seven Eves, it's pretty good. No, but the I played tag line, Mask. The tagline from the tweet was "The moon will come." 
That's oh. it. Just, just like Dave Matthews. <laughs> Wait, no. Just like Kurt Cobain. Um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, Seven Years is about the moon exploding. It's pretty good. It's not quite the same, but that's the only, one of the few books. It's not the best book in the world, but it's a good enough book that at like midnight when I was reading it, I had like almost had a panic attack because of what was happening in the book. And I will always remember that. Um, speaking of panic attacks, uh, Elden Ring. Big news here uh, in the news verse. Uh, if you had to guess what George R. R. Martin's job was for Elden Ring, would you probably guess it was for him to write things? No, actually. Not the in-game I... text. <laughs> no, because I was never under the impression that he had an active writing job in this. I was never I've under the impression thought, he had anything to do with it. I always thought it, he, he supplied some bullet points and then went back to massaging himself with all of his money that he's already pissed. Yeah, through. this was one of those headlines that when it popped up on my feed, I'm like, who? What? How is this even news? Because yeah, I, I always pictured it. He's in like essentially like a like a. And if you would watch the movie and someone has a story by credit and then somebody has a screenplay credit like that, I, that's how I always pictured it. That George yeah, R. R. Martin, an executive producer's credit. Yeah, executive producer <laughs> where he's just like over and he's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe here's a little a flavor of this, a flavor of that. And then the actual, you know, team narrative team, because it's probably I mean, I don't know if it's just Miyazaki who's writing like all like the like armor flavor text and dialogue but there's yeah. probably like an, a team of folks who's actually and like you know, he approves plunking it, hands on keyboards yeah Jud judging so by I, item descriptions in a game text in the other uh souls born games i assume there's someone that just follows me as akira and writes on every nonsense thing he <laughs> says and then just puts it in the game and is like nerds on the internet will pour over this and figure it out it's fine yeah. i was i, I feel like spreadsheet yeah. The only reason this is a story is because they wanted to capitalize on the George R. R. Martin doesn't write anymore, like fervor. Yeah, it's really stupid. It's like I, I agree. When I saw this headline, I'm like, well, why would he write the in-game? Like, what? Yeah. Why would he do that? Yeah, um, he's not. He's not sitting down at all the morning meetings with the with the people at FromSoft. And like, okay, <laughs> here's the action items for this week. We have to come up with the dialogue for this and for that. He's not doing that. He just speaks fluent Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's he's he got the time. He, he ain't writing. Um. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, even when they said he was working on this game, I, I'm still like, it's a from software game, so I'm not. I'm still not expecting this upfront story that's gonna like kick your teeth in like a Game of Thrones. It is. Is. A marketing tool. Yeah. His name is being attached to this for PR purposes. So and I, I think like that's very common in film and television. It's less yeah. so common in games where everyone's got such a fucking toot about it. I do think this will be a bit more of a like simple story than your usual Miyazaki thing, because man, he really made Armored Core 5 and then was like, I don't need to have stories anymore, right? I can just do whatever the fuck I want. And then from software was like, yeah, because you make a bajillion dollars for us. Yeah, I just they're even like making assumptions here in the article saying, like, as always, item descriptions and NPC dialogue will be the main way of getting the story. And I'm like, you you don't the game's not out. You don't know that. I, like, but also, do you mean how video games work? That too. Yeah, but... if it's not if it's not Destiny, where they're publishing physical volumes <laughs> of their in-game lore. <laughs> For you to read after the fact <laughs> the game's not out the game could start and it starts on a screen that says here's the entire story of the game and then you click a through it and oh. then there's no story in the game like nobody knows the game's not out i yet. would actually love if a game did that <laughs> just up front. It, it, it tells you like it tells you here is who your character is here's what they're going to do you hit a there is no more dialogue in this game <laughs> i would i would kill for recaps when you come back to a video game and it like sort of in like Previously some on. of the ways uh, yeah, unt until zero. dawn and super massive games do it just be like oh yeah this is what happens there is a game that does that now that i'm thinking about it Can't i feel like the is. super massive games it's more a byproduct of 
it being built into like a television storytelling format. Yeah, that's true. More so than them being yeah. like, this will be helpful narratively. Uh, will you're thinking of Dragon Quest Eleven? No, I haven't played Dragon Quest Eleven yet. Oh, but there Dragon is Quest Eleven does that. There is, a, there are. It may not be a specific game, but there are games that during the loading screen, it's like this is what I've been doing. Like sort of the way Metro does that, where he like describes what mm. what they're going to oh, be yeah, doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I like that sort like of thing because you never know how long it is between coming back to a game and, yeah. and starting that sort of stuff. So I just thought that was interesting. Last time I played Metro Exodus, I switched all the in-game voice to Russian and nice. just yeah. the subtitles in English. It was way more fun. That's, awesome. that's, that's the that's way how, you do Ever it. since I read the interview with the director where he's like, I would prefer if people did that. I was like, I'll try it. It's such a good experience. And it's cool yeah. in Metro when... Um, uh, Damn it! Uh, how's that voice actor with the incredibly deep Steve Bloom? Steve Bloom's character still speaks English because I was like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" And then he's like, "Oh no, that guy's just American. He doesn't speak <laughs> yeah. Russian." And yeah, I'm like, that's so fucking cool. Um, yeah, man, I gotta finish. I never finished Metro Exodus. I should probably do that. Good. Um, oh yeah, I'll have to play Stalker Two all in Russian. Yeah, uh, Exodus is a great game. Shame that franchise is dead. At least it got an ending. Yeah, yeah. I just, two more was really good. Some franchises get. Yeah, I mean, it, and it got a pretty good ending. Don't spoil it. Um, you, you probably believe me, but yeah. <laughs> it's a weird ending. Oh, uh, I'm gonna jump down here. I forgot to, as per orders from uh, from the producer Ian Gibson, I should order the the um, news items in, in importance, but I literally did not do that. I did we, put something Are we talking up. about the only one I care about? We did put one on here for you, so we'll get there in a second, but don't worry. I just wanted to talk about the um, new law in China about video games. Wild. Uh, not as wild Crazy. as the new, uh, some of the stuff happening around the world in not video game news but uh, oh really interesting <laughs> really global global geopolitics more complicated than video games who'd have thunk uh, china has forbid under 18 year olds from playing video games for more than three hours a week um okay they describe growing addiction to spiritual opium <laughs> England is once again poisoning China with their their video drug um with their overwatches this is kind of crazy um mostly mostly because it's crazy but also because of how many things that affects as far as mm -hmm. like Chinese esports and a lot uh, and just esports in general with like young up and coming like i saw so many threads it was mostly mobas specifically but like league of legends and stuff being like oh they won't have these qualifying matches anymore because the, like under 18 year olds won't be able to you play in them and you won't be able to do like a growth thing and all this sort of stuff so yeah um well yeah i'd be i'd be interested also to see because obviously there's been you know, like a handful of not like scandals, but kerfuffles of like a company, you know, putting its foot in its mouth because China's like, hey, don't do that. And there's been like this this idea that there's a lot of these Western companies kowtowing to, you know, Chinese communism because they want their dollars. Such as um, Riot Games, such as or, or Blizzard. Yeah, Blizzard. And, but I wonder Some if pixel. that's going to affect it all. <laughs> Of us. Um, where, do you, where do you think Ian Gibson is right now? He's he's in Beijing, in Beijing brokering a deal. Yeah, for the release um, of Kyle. We've, we've just been bought by Tencent. Um, Man, announcing would, it here. I would sell the Tencent. <laughs> but I wonder if it's going to be like if you know if if Blizzard can ever get itself out from under the scandal it's currently in. If that's going to affect you know. Well, are we going to cater to a market that's only allowed to play three hours a week? Um, uh, yeah. I will say majority of pro players and people who are aspiring to be pro, pro players, uh, this rule does not apply to them as right. they use VPNs they, to play on yeah. Korean servers. And they're probably over yeah. 18. Um, uh, I, you'd be surprised. I mean, like you said, a lot of up and comers, but like a lot of people enter esports young because it is a thing that like the better your reaction area mm -hmm. muscles are and like your uh just unless you got these old slow bones that we got 
uh, the better you're going to be. So I will say it says here they limit under 18s uh, to playing for one hour a day, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on only Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, they can also play for an hour at the same time on public holidays. Uh, Labor Day is coming up, so you get your extra. I'd be hour. interested to <laughs> I, in like in like three months. I want to see the numbers of like bandwidth usage, where there's just that one hour of the day where it just skyrockets <laughs> and then goes back down. Do you think they get to choose the hour, or do you think it's a set hour every day? No, but didn't did you say eight? Didn't to you nine just say eight to nine? Oh, I'm an idiot. Yes, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. No, you read I, it. I, I, sorry, I, in my head, I read 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. They can choose an hour. Oh, like a window. Game I time. Sorry. I, am, I, you're totally am, right. I, am I insane in thinking that, like, scheduling the entire co co uh, co company country will be on the <laughs> internet for an hour every day is a bad idea? It, it seems unwise. Like, they should at least, like, like stagger it by region or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I oh. They don't believe in uh, time zones in China. Mm. But also it, it I, helps with they can't like they can keep an eye on everyone at the same time and make sure like, yeah, that way I they mean, don't have to have monitoring the other. Yeah, but it's going to be so hours. difficult. It's going to be so difficult to monitor that, especially with people using VPNs yeah. and getting around it. But also like, I mean, this only applies to teenagers. So like if I'm 18 years old, uh, that's true in, in china i like if and if i live in a house that has a 16 year old how the fuck are they gonna know that he's not just playing at the same time yeah, I it seems very difficult to enforce apart yeah. from your neighbors narking on you yeah and i wonder if any of this is response to like you know like the minecraft free library and all that sort of stuff if they're just trying to cut down on uh the corruption of youth in their in their country um sort of thing so i'll say when i was a kid my parents only let me have half an hour a day of gaming time so now Ooh, i can it. tell them that they're worse they were... than china <laughs> worse than china <laughs> ah, ah. that's ungodly. they'd, oh. they'd love that <laughs> i didn't realize I, so i would it... just occasionally be told to go outside now then i would just be like okay yeah. and then I'd go outside my parents gave up after a while um uh, I didn't realize previously it was 1.5 hours on any day and three hours on holidays, um, which seems that's a pretty crazy jump. Yeah, mm -hmm. because that's like, honestly, that's probably how much I other than the three hours on holidays, I probably play an hour and a half every day. But then weekends, I play a lot more. And then yeah. and also like if it's, it's only Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So like if your family goes out for dinner on Friday, you're fucked. Yeah, that too. I don't I don't I, I don't know enough about like Chinese week structure to know that they also take Saturdays and Sundays off. I assume so, because yeah. that's how the world works. Um, like, yeah, like you just miss out on 33 percent of your game time. For, Thanks, for, mom. Yeah, you're going to have your Mountain Dew gamer fuel. Now, I don't mean to, <clears throat> I will say I have ignorance when it comes to pretty much everything other than video games. But do these laws apply to like Taiwan and Hong Kong and that sort of stuff? No. Or is it, it's just, it's just mainland China? Not uh, yet. I, I mean, I, I would assume they definitely don't apply in Taiwan. Uh, right, right. I would assume yeah. they do not apply in Hong Kong. Well, I um, should say, do they, does China think they apply in Taiwan? Yes. But uh, they can't like, enforce it. Yeah, probably. It's yeah, curious. probably that. I, I, I would assume they don't apply to Hong Kong. Um, and if they do, it's going to be 85 times harder to enforce than it is in mainland China. So though, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just curious because I, I mean, all that stuff's always been in the news. So I, I wonder how that kind of yeah. builds out. But interesting stuff uh, as far as the globalization of video games, uh, for sure. Uh, Jake. You, you can take it away, my friend. Talk about it. So, obviously, what happened was Sean Murray watched my uh, No Man's Sky video. Which where is good, at, by the way. At the end of it, I was like, hey, No Man's Sky is too big. There's no cities. These planets don't feel lived in. Here's some kind of procedural tools that might make an interesting blah, 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 blah. And he went, wow, how insightful. Let's add procedural cities to no man's sky 
And then, like the madman he is, they just did it. Wow. And now there's procedural towns that you can, like, like you can, like, get hired as an overseer and you can build new stuff and expand them. I've not dove into it yet so i don't know how that plays out in like the greater you know system economy or whatever but it the team at hello games just continues to go full bonkers on the development of no man's sky um it's crazy especially when you look like at where the game was oh yeah uh, uh, five years ago i think i think it was august of 2016 that it launched so we just passed the five-year anniversary. Um, now, question. When did your video come out? Uh, January oh, of 2021. Was it that long ago? Yeah, man. So, Time is a flat circle. Mm-hmm. Theoretically. He, he could have. Eight months Eight. of dev time? Yeah, he crunches. He has to. It would be tight. Especially for a team of like twelve people, isn't he like beloved for being a very fair and yeah, like not pretty sure? <laughs> yeah, there is no one that I want more success for in their next game than Sean Murray in the games mm-hmm. industry. More, more than yeah. the guys at Supergiant, more than Supermassive to get their toes out of their assholes and make a good video game again. Um, I, Sean Murray deserves the world. Yeah, mostly because he lied to everyone. I, it's a lot more complicated than I'm that. I'm just kidding. I'm playing the Ian part because I know he's screaming it right now. He didn't fuck. <sighs> no, I'm. I mean, it was that Hello Hello Games desperately needed a PR <laughs> consultant. Yeah, but Sony just Sony just gave them so much money, and then they just let Sean Murray go on every possible TV show that he could. It's because he's good at talking to a camera. It's yeah. kind of like when Hideo Kojima just He's tweets things, you know, yeah. like yeah. Mads Max. Well, I mean, uh, I, like, what are oh you talking about, Kojima? Um, that tweet, that tweet is so. Zach posted the article in um in the same Discord, like as a news topic. But I was no, 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 no. Let's read this fucking tweet and how unhinged this man is. Uh, um, this actually looks cool enough that I should re-download the five hundred thousand gigs of. No Man's Sky. Oh, yeah, I, I want to also reiterate, in case, you know, for the two people that watch this who have no idea about No Man's Sky, um, every update since the game has come out has been free. Yeah. Obviously. Five years of updates. You buy the base game for, I, I don't think it was $60, or maybe it was $60, but I think you can probably I think get I paid it. Like, 60. I think it was 50 which is like the weirdest amount. Between 40 and 60 but yeah, you buy the one and then you get yeah gigs on gigs on gigs of free updates. yeah i still think there is a tremendous market for a a ai that just flies through this thing as a yes. live stream and just is like a, a moving wallpaper that's pretty good i would love it i would i think it's an amazing idea that i wish someone uh, had done that as smart i love me. a lot of things about this game uh and then there's some things that just still annoy the heck out of me about this game so like i'm very iffy on it but uh you can now i think s- they should remove the survival mechanics yes but I that agree. would be maybe the biggest thing i change but yeah and i people think want, some of the like, like interaction and, um, stuff is a little rough but i will say they the they did an update where they got rid of the tutorial right you can just jump right in now i don't um, know i think i want to say i read that somewhere because i feel like every time i play that game it like doesn't remember anything about what I've ever done in that game. And it just has me restart. You can definitely turn the tips off. No, but I, I know I like, that's a setting. I feel like every time I boot up that game, it's like, hey, you're on this planet and you got to fix your ship again. And it's like mm, none I of see. my saves are there. But that's probably just me. After I uninstall it, I probably I probably hit the delete saves thing. So it's, mm. it's on me, but I'll definitely check it out. Um, I was just I excited. Still am waiting for that game to actually be done before I check it out again. Because um, when I played it when it first came out, I was like, "This is fine. It's not what I, it's not what we all were hoping for." But we at that point we had realized we've gotten to, we've got we've flown clo- uh, flown too close to the Sean Murray sun, um, and <clears throat> we got our hopes too big. But like they keep adding fucking content, and eventually one day they'll stop adding content, and then I will be like, "I'm gonna get fucking No Man's Sky, guy try." Yeah, I'm I'm very interested to see what the game is like on that day. Yeah. Cuz yeah. 
I think I think because it could have been I, years ago and I would have been surprised, but they just yeah kept fucking going because I think what one of the things I said at the end of the video was like something along the lines of like and hello games is just threatening to drop new content on us at any moment <laughs> with no signs of stopping i feel like they just did the did the calculations that are like we can make a new game or we could just keep doing stuff for free because people keep giving us money i want to know so i want to know how much money they're making from new sales and how much they're just still is still from that initial like because f- five years of game development. That's a lot. With not a single, like, like I have not given money to No Man's Sky in five years. Who's but they've given me Sony? Sony's. It was, yeah. A, yeah, the card that comes out with Sony Interactive Entertainment. Honestly, presents. I would not be surprised if they gave them carte blanche. Mm-hmm. Um, especially because they're no longer paying David Cage. And they, they oh, when they, yeah. they acquired Quantic Dream, it was for the efforts of diversifying our portfolio, which that was the thing that they said, which by the way, man, that feels like shit if you're at Quantic Dream, right? I mean, <laughs> fuck them. And uh, of course we now know retroactively that they're, mon- I mean, we knew before because David Cage is a piece of shit, but um, Weirdo. I, like, why not just continue to just give uh, like every time this comes up, it's just good PR. You, you, you only get people that play No Man's Sky saying this is great. And people that didn't play No Man's Sky are being like, hey, that's awesome that they keep doing it. There's, there's like not really. It can't cost that much for Sony in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. They're still selling their Horizon Zero Dawns. Yeah, and because I mean, as far as I guess studio overhead, it is still like less than twenty people. I think in like yeah, a, wasn't it like an office in or something like South that? South London. Yeah, this it's is... not. It's not many people. There's a couple articles. I mean, these are articles from 2016, saying within the first month it sold estimated 2.5 million copies. Um, it's pretty fucking good. It's a lot of uh, money. I can't find anything concrete. I know a lot of people returned it, but like, I mean, I'd be willing to bet, just like with Cyberpunk, most people didn't. Mm-hmm. Actually, this Reddit article, someone says it's probably about Tree Fitty, is how much they sold. Uh, I hate you so much. It's literally the top comment on uh, this, this post. Yeah. yeah, the more I think about it, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Sony was just like, we'll pay for it. Who gives a shit? It, it costs us pennies in the grand scheme. Yeah. Of it probably still makes a decent amount of money and it diversifies their portfolio, which is what yeah. they care about in a grand corporate scheme. Yeah. yeah. Like they don't have microtransactions. There's because I, I thought like it's kind of the perfect game to have cosmetics. If you know a ship skin or a, a you know, an <laughs> astronaut skin, but all that's just been added with the updates for free. But also yeah. a lot of a lot of like the stuff that ha- that drives that is like can i show it to my friends right and like this isn't like you know i'm not jumping in a party and going on the fps missions mm-hmm. were there did they ever have that space war back into it there are fleet battles but there you encounter them randomly it's not something you can like right, right, right. seek out is the is the plot still find the center of the universe uh yes but it's it's got more a little bit more nuance than that but that's still the end goal is cool. get to the center of the universe and then get to yeah. a new universe and go to the center of that one i mean i like the whole like uncovering languages shit there's mm-hmm. a, there's a that was cool fun. stuff here yeah i um oh, fuck. now i kind of want to play no man's <laughs> i was gonna say Damn you, Jake Stereo. the only other thing about sales numbers was there could you do steam refunds in 2016 um i think well i, I think at the time steam might have made a special exception because so many people were upset yeah maybe that was um where it, a lot of people that of course elapsed their whatever it was two hours or four hours but um uh, just because that was kind of the nature of the game that you needed to play that much to get to you know any you know point of substance um so i think they had made a special exception for people on steam to refund you are it. exactly correct i think i will say though thinking about it now i think the hype of every big update is oh this is the update to get in on no man and sky catches more more and more of those people who haven't bought it every single time mm. so so for sure um that's it um great um, i i'm glad you got to talk about no five, man's sky. Five, five years ago a comment by deleted uh on reddit uh says uh or someone saying the for the top comment is someone saying yikes this doesn't look great for hello games and then the person underneath says yep they'll be closing their doors to goodbye games soon enough 
Like oh, fine man. line. Yeah, does that person have egg on their face? Oh. Well, they deleted the account. They, they deleted their Reddit account since their then. whole account. <laughs> it was too embarrassing. It was Sean Murray's mother. Um, I just want to hit Miss, this, Mrs. Murray. It has been an hour. I just want to hit this last uh, news story before. Uh, I do some quick hits here, which was I just found this interesting. Um, they talked to MGM about uh, IOI's James Bond game coming up, and I found it pretty interesting, mostly because the big quote here is, quote, we're not here for a quick buck, uh, which I feel like is how you could explain every James Bond game that has ever come out is yeah. a basic FPS game. Uh, that is just there to make money quickly. Even, I mean, other probably than GoldenEye, which happened to revolutionize a lot of things uh, as far as <laughs> multiplayer. I know that it was going to do that. No, exactly. Um, and I think they just kind of thought that was the magic the whole time. Even the GoldenEye right. remake was awful. The The oh closest thing that was great was that XBLA one that was finished and then never released that I have on this computer. Um, because they couldn't get the licensing rights from MGM right. for it. Um, I don't know if I, you guys I, had any thoughts about it. I just thought this was cool because I'm looking forward to this game. Um, go ahead, Chris. I saw this article, too, on, on Twitter um, before you sent the list over. And I thought I thought the way it read was very much like IO saying, we have full intentions of this being another thing that we do. We make Hitman. We make James Bond. And we'll do it forever because we've done. Hey, we've done Hitman forever so far. We'll keep going, baby. Uh, we have we got no problems with this. I also am very confident still that this is going to let you make your own James Bond. I would yeah. Love that. So so they talked to uh, Matthew. Is this Suzer. one where they said there's no microtransactions? Or am um, I thinking of something else? I'm not sure. Do I Hitman games here. normally have microtransactions? No, I'm. Th there was something recently, some single player game recently that had an interview where the devs were like, "There's no microtransactions," and everybody went, "Yay, thank you." That's such a fucking um, brownie points thing that game. Devs I know, do but I, I don't remember if um, it was this or not. So I will say the one thing is the the guy that from MGM they talked to at least seemed well versed because he was like, he said it quote, "It all comes down to identifying the right developer partner." IO is the authority in stealth and agent oriented games, so they are dreams come true in terms of studios to partner with on james bond it's like thank you for doing your research and not being like hey ea can you make us a james bond game like going to the people who would make a great james bond game um i think is definitely key so i'm happy for them i'm happy for io uh because they deserve everything coming their way because uh they have done everything very well uh so far so, looking forward to that. Looking forward to the new James Bond movie that's finally going to come out. Um, Eventually. Will it? Will it? Top Someday. Gun got pushed back to May. <gasps> There's a documentary about Daniel Craig coming out on September 7th. Being James Bond. Ooh. I'll coming watch that. Or the fucking Bond movie. Yeah, when's the Bond movie? Uh, it's like November or December or some bullshit. Yeah, man, I, f I freaking Dune is in October. Dune uh, is in October. Oh, yeah. just kidding. It's October 8th. No time to die is. <sighs> oh, Doom. I'm ex or Dune. Dune. I'm excited for uh, Dune and, with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I can't believe Mission Impossible got pushed too. not as bad as I remember it being. Isn't there a whole like FPS section? Yes. Yes. That's cool. We talked about Jake did a video on uh, Terry O Studios. Terry O about Studios. how I would rewrite it. On how we rewrite easier it easier phonetically than the French spelling. <laughs> I've gotten really good at spelling your name. I will thank you. Toot my own horn. Um, that's gonna be it, folks. Uh, actually, these quick hits here. Uh, it was mostly just CD Projekt Red hired mod makers to work on Cyberpunk, and they also can't guarantee the next gen versions of their past two games will be out this year. Um. And Sega's gonna lose the Yakuza director because they're fucking incompetent. Yep. And oh, and, and I just thought those stupid Call of Duty made uh, heroes in their new game based off of real life people, but obviously changed the names because some of the circumstances right. are different. They made the American American, the British guy British, the European, the country they were from. I can't remember specifically, but the, the New Zealander they made Australian and people from Did New Zealand. Did they not learn from Battlefield 
to just not fucking do this because you'll get something wrong, you idiots. Yeah, because the Battlefield one, they made the they made instead a, of the girl from Norway, they just made it a, a London girl who was happened to be there, right? Oh, I was talking about the one where they made a German resistance fighter uh, into one of the heroes for the Nazi side. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, now. I remember that. Or sorry, this might have been for Battlefield One, which should have been Germany, not Nazi Germany, but still. But uh, it's just like it's what it's right there. Why? It's like you have fucking Wikipedia open. But it's like you got you got the name from somewhere. You didn't just fucking like you didn't just make it up. Like he's a national, and he's not the exact one to one character, uh, but he's a New Zealand war hero. Like national, like people know who this person is, and they're basing it off of him. And to just make him Australian. It's, it's like making, it's not a direct comparison, but like making an American war hero a Canadian or a Canadian war hero American. Do you remember when Kojima hired an entire team of people to make sure all of the, the word usage in MGS5 made sense? No, but that sounds like a day of Kojima. The thing he did, because he, like he, wanted, he wanted to justify all of his names because he's Kojima. They literally spent months figuring out how to make Shala Shaska makes sense as a nickname oh, for ocelot so good it's Tell amazing us, um, i just yeah i like, always wonder Kojima. you're a bigger company fucking pay someone to do the research and he clearly did it for like, death stranding too and it's not it's not that hard like like you were saying it's not that hard to just open up you know wikipedia and double check like if i were to post one of the scripts for you know the you know not not as important culturally sub pixel videos that we produce there's just like hyperlinks upon hyperlinks of me just like making sure that I'm not lying yeah. or saying the something one wrong. Is, it's really pissing me off when I think about it because just change the fucking flag PNG. Yeah. The but accents are so similar. No one's going to fucking know. But and even like they they talk to the dev and the, there's a quote in the article where they're just like, oh, yeah, well, it's not a direct one to one. So we have some liberties to make. And I'm like, but that's not the liberty you should be making. Like you could make the liberty and make it a, a woman from New Zealand who did it or anything. But to like strip the pride from the country and just put it somewhere else is like. It's insanity. I, I just replaced all the New Zealand heroes with the Call of Duty dog from whatever generation that was. <laughs> ghosts. Uh, I that sounds like ghosts. Remember when they spent two E threes telling us how well modeled that dog was? <laughs> what the uh, and also the Ace Combat dog. <laughs> I love the Ace Combat, Ace dog, Combat dog more than anything so in my whole good. life. Good. Because, there, because there's two ways to go about putting a dog in your fucking video games. There's spending millions of dollars on fur tech and 3D modeling a dog. dog and tech. Like, and then, and and then, then you just cut out a PNG. <laughs> your PNG off of Google. And make it like Doom, Doom turn, <laughs> like a sprite. <laughs> oh my god, that, that video where it's like, it was like right when all that stuff happened and it was like they typed dog PNG transparent into Google and six pages in they found the dog and they were also, like God, why it. did the scene need a dog <laughs> why not america <laughs> put a flag or a no, drugs <laughs> <laughs> or, or racists <laughs> mm. hey, you don't know you don't, you don't know that dog's past oh that's true it's a true, racist I guess. dog uh okay I'm, we're getting out of here i'm gonna Folks. play the music <laughs> Here comes the music. Here comes the thunder, everybody. Tune in next week where we talk about Moon Crash. <laughs> Folks, go read Seven E's by Neil Stevenson. It's a good book. Um, boys. Moonfall, moon Crash Prey DLC. Moonfall Crash Prey DLC. The moon will come if you don't stop them. Um, don't hedge it. Don't hedge it. Don't hedge it. Don't hedge it. That's what I always say. I always say. I always say that. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in to Local Chat this week. If you have anything you would like to complain about, feel free to email me at will at subpixelfilms.com, and I will be sure to send you a PNG of my foot. That um, dog from Ace Combat. From, yeah, that dog from Ace Combat. Combat and my foot. That's a guarantee. Um... Jake, Chris, thank you for being here. Uh, is there anything either of you would like to plug? Like drain. Uh, 
potato in my tail. <laughs> the moon. Uh, I don't know. It's currently 1010. And if I leave this podcast fast enough, I might have enough time to go watch the finale of Broadchurch. Ooh, a, oh, a great, great show. Uh, and I have, I'm, I'm almost certain I know who the killer is. No, you don't. Uh, I actually don't remember. It's time to rewatch Broadchurch. There you go. Um, Karen and I are watching through The Boys. We just started season two. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Season one was very good, though. Season one was great. Um, also, we watched the two last two what ifs. Eh, I'm, I'm iffy on it. It's cool, but eh. uh, Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Subbooksandfilms.com, Subbooks the team on all the socials, and we will see you all next week.